All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy. With me, your host, Jan. Let's talk about Bayern Munich and the Champions League. Yes, indeed. This is a match review of Chelsea's 3-0 home loss. Quite humbling. Fortunately, it's not quite the 7-2 humbling Tottenham Hotspur endured at home. But still, this was a very difficult game for Chelsea, certainly the second half. And it's actually a pretty interesting tactical battle in the first half. And in the second half, Bayern's quality just shone. And Chelsea's vulnerabilities and perhaps this current squad's mental weaknesses came to surface. So we're going to talk about all this kind of gear in today's match review. But before we do, I want to remind you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy. If you've not yet done so, please do sub, hit the bell notifications icon. I make football videos, Chelsea Football Club videos every single day. Come check it out, please subscribe, and why not follow me on Instagram to hang out with me on Instagram Lives. Let's get into it. All right, Chelsea came into this game where the kind of pressure was off. They didn't really have anything to lose. They qualified out the group. They got the finances from that. They were <laughs> the tie against Bayern Munich really is a very, very difficult fixture, especially if you look at their 11, Chelsea's 11, their sort of run of form, the players, their particular players form, like Alfonso Davies, Nabry, Lewandowski, Thiago's been excellent. They're, if you compare their quality and the monopoly they have in their league with Chelsea Football Club, Chelsea were 16-5 to to win at home, and the, the score line reflects why those odds were given by bookmakers pre-match. But I'm reluctant to dig anyone out particularly. I think everyone gave a lot, tried everything. I think Frank Lampard did what a lot of people wanted him to do. He, in fact, you know what, let's bring up the Who Scored Match Centre so you guys can look at the lineups, formations and statistics. So there it is, Chelsea did play the same formation and indeed lineup that they played uh, against Tottenham Hotspur and won. <laughs> Only a few days turnover with no rotation had me a little bit worried. Um, and perhaps they did burn out a little bit in the second half. Notice the golf in quality from the starting 11s from both teams. Chelsea's working front three consisted of Ross Barkley, Mason Mount and Olivier Giroud. Who, you know, obviously Giroud and Mount have got good moments. But generally it doesn't scream quality. In comparison to Robert Lewandowski, the world's best informed centre forward. Flanked by Kingsley Coman and Serge Gnabry. So, yeah. To be honest, in the first half, Chelsea looked good in the sense of they were digging in, they had to soak it up, they had to endure loads of uh, buy-in pressure, right? But this is the thing, Chelsea have been playing with the ball, they've been playing with the onus to go and attack and make combinational play in the final third. So I'm actually quite pleased and indeed proud of Frank Lampard and the team to take the pragmatic approach here. They thought, right, we're going to play this system that allows us to play a back five out of possession. Uh, we're going to try and play the box midfield again, which consists of Jorginho, Kovacic, um, Mount and Ross Barkley and actually Olivier Giroud drops inside the box and tries to combine that's what works so well against Tottenham Hotspur did it again offers a lot of security great in the first half there were chances on both sides Bayern Munich had the lion's share of possession by quite some distance but um, Chelsea although they got you know they had to dig in like they said they endured a couple of close shots Willy Caballero was actually excellent in the first half in terms of making saves it looked alright, Chelsea were okay in transition, going from defence to attack. They carved out a few chances themselves, not perhaps as big as Bayern Munich's, but still chances that Chelsea could have scored from. And like I said, in that first half, the standout performers, probably the two standout, were Mateo Kovacic was magnificent in the first 45 minutes, perhaps he burnt out in the second half after loads of recent football. Um, and like I said, Caballero and Kovacic. Alonso was okay in that first half, but he <laughs> rapidly became a villain in the second half when he got sent off. Um, we'll talk about that in just a second. And other than that, I'm not really sure. I think Mount had a few bright moments. Ross Barkley did not really look good at all. Uh, for the first goal, it's still well the second half now. Chelsea conceded very, very quickly. Um, it was really unfortunate and I guess unlucky because it was an Espelicueta slip that led to the combination that led to Chelsea conceding. All three goals from that Chelsea conceded were brilliant sort of systemic Germanic goals from Bayern Munich combinational play, counter-attack, cutbacks, that sort of thing. There was loads of good combinations. In the first half, to go back to the first half quickly, um, Thomas Muller was just constantly in pockets of space. You can tell he was been written off over the last few years a few times, but he always comes back. He's this canny operator that always finds pocket of space to combine with the midfielders and forwards and make dangerous attacks. He did that all throughout the first 45 minutes. I think Chelsea dealt with it a bit better in the second half. 
But for, you know, not before Kurt Kingsley Coman came off, there was always a flick onto him, you know, advancing down the flank, which led to either a cutback or a combination. They kept carving through Chelsea quite efficiently, and I don't think this was particularly a tactical thing so much. I think it's hard to say this, but I think it's just lit literal quality. Chelsea just do not have the quality to deal with this elite Bayern Munich side. You know, one to eleven, they've got amazing players. <laughs> Even the ones that you think perhaps won't be playing that well anymore are still playing incredibly well. Obviously a huge, huge influence in this game and has probably been the second or first best player this season. Well, probably not. If you talk about Lewandowski, he's been carrying them. But Alfonso Davies at left back was just incredible for Bayern Munich. The way he advances forward, he's got such speed and strength and uh, he's got a good touch generally. But even when he doesn't, he'll always catch up with his bad touch before the opposition player. Him down that flank was so, he really gave Reese James a really, really stern test in this game and he was integral to a lot of the positive things that Bayern Munich did. So Chelsea conceded two goals to Serge Gnabry and Robert Lewandowski doing their thing in the final third but after Chelsea conceded the second Frank Lampard did want to change and he said right if we get a goal probably here still in it we got to do stuff. Um, we went to a back four, Willian came on, Tammy Abraham came on for Giroud. Giroud did start very well in terms of a couple of flick-ons but he faded, he hasn't got the mobility to deal with this and Pedro came on as well so basically a whole fresh front three came on and Chelsea went to a 4-3-3. In the second half Jorginho did get a yellow card which sees him suspended for the second leg which is a little bit a little bit of a dead tie now and of course later on in the game Marcus Alonso had an incident with Robin Lewandowski, Robert Lewandowski off the ball where he sort of they collided a little bit and then he wants, runs to the ball Lewandowski sort of cuts across him and Alonso's arm goes around him. It doesn't really look like a red card to me because of the action of Lewandowski. I mean, fine, give it as a foul, maybe even give it as a yellow card, but I think it's a bit peculiar to give that as a red card. But at that point, Chelsea, it's not like they're going to miss him at that point. And to be honest, Chelsea looks pretty toothless from then onwards. So let's talk about player performances. Obviously, Mateo Kovacic was absolutely magnificent in the first half. Faded a little bit. Perhaps that's down to the team around him fading a little bit. Can't really dig out Caballero at all. Made some good saves in the first half. Claimed the ball well. Never tried to play the ball out the back, which is great against this kind of opposition when you're looking at the personnel, unsettled personnel, Chelsea personnel on the pitch in front of you. So I get it, just play it long. Uh, Christensen was alright in the first half. Sadly, I think Antonio Rudiger was very poor. To be honest, R Rudiger's been pretty poor quite a lot recently. This is the kind of games I want to see Tomori come back in for. You know, he played really well in the cup and then he got dropped. So I don't know what's happening in training, but even Zuma, you know, or Tomori. <laughs> Would have been better than Rudiger, in my opinion. Alonso, okay in the first half, but, you know, I, I don't want to dig anyone out particularly too much because the team, when the team crumbles around them, you can't really blame on to, you know, these particular players. What you need is someone to lift the players, like a leader. Reese James, I thought, was good. Um, he was frustrated when people weren't making the right runs, but I think he did play quite well. Jorginho played okay. He can only really pass where he's looking, so you don't expect him to turn like Kovacic does. Giroud, a few notable flick-ons in the first half, which are really, really important, and obviously were part of the game plan. Good, I get that. Boateng got the better of him a little bit a few times, which kind of frustrated me, which I think Giroud should be better than that. Mason Mount did have some bright moments, actually. Uh, he pressed the ball, recovered possession. Uh, he had a couple of chances himself. Chelsea's rare amount of chances in this game often Mason Mount was involved sadly I think Ross Barkley this game is just beyond him um, I had high hopes for him in the preseason I know he can have a good game in him whether it's for England or the other one for Chelsea but unless he's in scintillating form you can't really rely on him in a Champions League game against Bayern Munich I think perhaps it's just not Ross Barkley's level Tammy Abraham came on but to be honest he's not really been as much of like a bench player as in like a substitute a super sub basically I've never really seen him as that I think he's a quite, I think he might be a streaky player, Tammy Abraham. We need to get him back in form and scoring goals again. But, you know, I think he nearly got onto a ball. I think he was frustrated that Willian didn't continue the run in, in an attacking move. But by then, Chelsea were cooked. So what does this mean? Let's talk about this a little bit. 3-0 down. Um, obviously, no Alonso in the next leg. That doesn't really matter. I think Frank Lampard would probably go over back four, to be honest, anyway. Um, even if, you know... Even if Chelsea just lost 2-0 or 2-1, I think Frank Lampard would go with a different approach. It's looking highly unlikely Chelsea can do anything in this tie now. But, you know, Alonso isn't a big loss. I think Jorginho will be a big loss, but there's a chance 
Just like a massive truck driving past my apartment. Jorginho will be a big loss, but I think N'Golo Kante could be fit for the return leg so he could play in a midfield of Kovacic. But really, this game just further demonstrates Chelsea. Um, ability, spirit, belief at times, but that sort of lack of mentality, the sort of professionalism on the pitch, and that's fine for a lot of them because they're young and they can develop that. But some players just don't have it and it looks like they never will. It's clear Chelsea need to clear out to a degree and they need to bring in reinforcements, but the young ones are learning and they will get better, but they really need some quality injected all around that starting 11. When it comes to Frank Lampard, I don't know, I feel like he made the right approach, everyone was happy with the lineup. I'm pleased he changed it, um, I think he did all he could with the players he had in terms of who he brought on. And on top of that, I think Frank Lampard, even though I don't want to criticise him particularly for this, He's learning, man. He's like a new young coach, and this is a new experience for him. He's like, you know, 18, 19 months into a job as a football coach, and he'll have a plan. He'll look to Bayern, he'll look at Chelsea. He did stuff that a lot of people would deem the correct thing to do, you know, in re implementing that box midfield uh, against Bayern Munich that works against Spurs. Bayern Munich can struggle against back threes. It all seemed like the right thing. But you know, you'll learn. Anyway, I said the pressure's off pre-match, and although it's a disappointing loss, it's a learning experience, and it's just hard, further highlights for how Chelsea need to develop as a team, as players, and then Frank Lampard as a manager. But what do you guys think? I want to get your thoughts and opinions on this football match in the comments section below. Get down there, let me know your thoughts, what you think about Chelsea moving forwards. Does this further highlight anything for you? Get down there and let me know, and if you've enjoyed the content today, guys, please do like the video. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. I'm out, guys. Enjoy the football if you can. I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick. Got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.